The rivers are choked with it. The gutters are stagnant with it. The trash cans are filled with it. Even our dung wheels are clogged with it. What am I talking about? Waste products. But interestingly, some people make a living out of it. Welcome to today's episode of the Women's Series where we capture developments and stories that impact women. Today, we'll be looking at women in the eco lifestyle and the waste and recycling industry. Permit me to introduce our guest today. My guest is, a, is she is a Nigerian fashion designer who is specifically known for making fashion products with Kewata Sashe. She is the founder of the Planet 3 Har and the Joker Links Weaving School. Then, need I add this to her credit, she's the winner of the Access Bank 2020 MSMEs Award and was recognized by President Muhammad Buhari as the Youth Innovator during the 2020 National Youth Day. Welcome with me, Adeja Kerr Lassisi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for accepting us into your space. I mean, you have got such a beautiful space here. Everything going on. I mean, when we walked into here, I noticed quite a number of things and caught my attention from the bags to the dresses. You're even wearing one. Yes, yes. I mean, seeing you before we even came here and then we read through some of your profile, I'm like, how exactly did this woman start? What could have motivated her? How did she even think of it? What exactly was she thinking of? I mean, because it is very unconventional to find someone to think of something so absurd, or the world might think it is absurd, and then make out something useful out of it. Could you talk us through your journey? Yeah. I mean, your educational background and into the entrepreneurship world. I started Ashoke at a very, very long, young age. My mom, I was born into weaving of Ashoke. So I started weaving Ashoke at age nine. So when I come back from school, I would help my mom with Ashoke. You know, since then, I see all these ways that people just put on the floor. Sometimes I would just pick them up, you know, like these things. But to me, all we do there is just pack up this waste from the land and keep it, but not doing anything with them. Like, oh, so you've been into this way, keeping of waste? Like, no, no, they, we just pour it away, like where yeah, everybody's just pouring it. There's even this place at the roadside that will just pour it there. Mm -hmm. So. Like, when we just pour it there, there's nothing to do with it. Eventually, fine, those wastes are no longer in our home. Yeah, it's not dirty, like, in our home anymore. But it is, it is still affecting the environment at large. Yeah. So after, after my secondary school, I went to Obafem Aola University. I went on to study medicine in Chiali, medicine and surgery. Then I dropped out of medical school. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know book enough. <laughs> I don't know. So no, I need to have gotten admission as medical school. I, I guess I when I got to school, I realized that there's more to just um, studying medicine. Like I guess it was just the mindset then that you, you just had medicine, medicine law. Exactly. Medicine. Yeah. So when I got to school, I realized that a lot of activities in school. I started volunteering for some programs in school. Started playing basketball for school. So I I enjoyed those things like. God, this is life. I, I like that the fact that I could do something with my hands, like help people, like um, just do something like that. So after that, I crossed to economics. So eventually, I graduated with a BSc in economics from Mobile Family University. Then I went for my youth service in Abuja. Then after that, when I came back, although during that time, during my service, youth service time, I started um, improving my Your entrepreneurship skills. yes yeah. not just my business not just my um, weaving skills now because that when i know that okay anytime even if they wake me up in you the middle of the night yes as in like anything in weaving but the business like turning it to a profitable business mm -hmm. i did not know much about that and i didn't know much about entrepreneurship so during my service year i started reading some books and what prompted me to um to to start doing that was that i'm um, doing the campaign some people came from Smeda, so they came to talk to us. So, like, they now told us about entrepreneurship. Like, I would say that that was like the. Call yeah, you. so I was like, ah, these people. When I started going to their office, I was like, can I come to the, the uniform, that NYC uniform? Eh? Like, it helped me, like, entering some offices. And I started learning about entrepreneurship, how to write my business plan a little. So, after that, you know, I wanted to set up their business in Abuja, okay. where I was weaving Ashoki. But Abuja was just so expensive for me. So I was like, ah, I will. 
let us just go back to my let me just go back to my house je, je, je. so when i came back to ibadan so i told my mom my parents that i wanted to like um, start a show okay that i realized that it has started going into extinction that people are no longer wearing a show okay don't value it as much as yes it yes before. so and be, but before that i made sure that i carried i carried out a little survey I asked people why they were no longer using it. Okay. So they told me that it is heavy, it is not attractive. So we came up with an innovative solution. I was like, ah, this thing, we just need to like get a solution for it. And more so, I'm just sitting at home. I know how to do something. Yes, let me just get a solution for this particular problem. Maybe that would even help, not just me now, but the economy as well. Yeah. So I was given a place at the back of the house, very dead, one place that is not even tied. So my dad gave me. I went to buy a used loom. So I bought it at 10,000 era then. So I, I started, and that was in 2013. It was a very, very old one. I could not afford a new one. So I now, I now yes, I now started within it. But customers don't come. Like you put it in their face online like this on Facebook. They will not still do it. They will prefer to go and choose the big brand. The, so yeah, as like, you were just a startup. Yeah, brand. so probably they didn't believe in me anything i just kept on doing that okay so maybe one day as it's like up. god despite the fact that i put it out there they put beautiful comments and that was what made me understand that getting comments and thousands of likes doesn't relate to sales until translate yes to translate sales. to sales yes until they pay you like this those people are you know your customers until <laughs> they pay like this right. so i was just like ah these people were, and they, they keep on saying, ah, okay, it's nice, it's good, it's good. But they were not paying, like, they are not. Sometimes I will not get any order in, like, a month, just at home, like. So later, I was like, okay, I know about photography. I started taking pictures. I would go to events, go and take pictures at different events. Before I come back from the lab like this, they would have gone. Like, yeah. as it, I would not see them. The people that I see, they would be pricey for 33, 400 naira. I was like, let me just get the money for use to, they use for printing. So many things like that, but... I just, there's one thing that I now realize about um, the journey of entrepreneurship or business is that when you keep putting all these things there and being okay, consistent, do you know that like after a year that I started putting all those things, some people reach out to me that they've been following me for a while, but they do not need, they do not have a, a need for, for the, for yes, that now they are ready. So like, I now understand that people actually watch you, but because at that time, they don't need yourself. Yes. And... And it would not make sense just because they want they to patronize like you and they, they just buy it. Yeah. So now, so I now I now got to understand like, okay, so just make sure that you keep doing what you do. Yes, and before you know it, like and that was how the journey of the Ashoke business, yes. So let's talk about the interesting part. I mean the most fascinating part of the story. Yes. Pure water sachet. I mean it is everywhere. You see it everywhere. How did you even was it I can't I don't even know what to say. How did the how did you get the inspiration? Where where, where did it come from? What okay. exactly were you thinking uh, about when it happened? What motivated me like when I started it? Um after I'd started weaving, like um the business is doing well. So in my environment where I stay, I stay in the rural community. Kilonje, as in what is a um, um waste management motto? <laughs> where will it come to? Will you tell people to so pay? Everywhere was just littered with waste Yes, products. nobody in my community who can pay for. They will not pay in Bologna, like they will be paying uh, government to Why come and pick their, their trash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it is not possible. Like people will not just do it in my community. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So, so you had a lot of it. A around. lot of waste. Like people even go to the extent of like burning their used clothes, just pack it together and burn it like that's what majority do so i was like i was not looking at it when it ah, all these things that we just keep burning number one all these things they have negative impact on our health that this this is a flame that just keeps coming out what can i do with this thing i was like i don't have big big company i went to look at youtube i realized that so many people were working with plastics and turning them into t-shirts and i look at their factory like this oh wow like the thing is so big they have this it you know that it's capital intensive like and i know that okay i do not have money for that how can i make the little a little impact in my community with especially on this environment yes 
So I was like, okay. So I look inward. I look at myself very well. What am I good at? What is it that I'm very good at? I can make a difference with it. And I really realized, okay, it is it is weaving, as in weaving. Eh? That is one thing that I'm very very good at. They wake you up like yes, you weaving. Know, like I was born into it. Like my mom, I was born into it, and I'm 34 years now. So imagine. Wow. So I've been seeing, sleeping, eating. I show okay, weaving, weaving, weaving. So when I now look at it, okay, how can we do this thing? So I now used some of the old jeans that people were no longer using. So I now shred them. When we did them, we didn't come out well. Oh, God. Different, different process that we go through. I put it down. Okay, okay, let us cut it into like one inch. Okay, it didn't come out well. The result, we put it there. Okay, ah, let us do it again. We shall so keep on. Yes, yes, yes. Too. Then we got t-shirts as well. We did some t-shirts. You see, that's one t-shirt there that we do. We now convert it into bag. Wow. We used, we weave it with t-shirts, the t-shirt, the old t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So I know I was like, okay, how can we now? These clothes, they are not really of, of really much um, problem to the environment, like all this nylon. And when I talk about nylon, it is pure water nylon the most. Because sometimes when you buy things with poly bags, sometimes you can still like reuse, reuse them. Yeah. You can just rinse them and probably, even if they are dry, if there's no water or something, you can still keep them. I have plenty of them, like I we just pile. Yes, no? now, yes, them. exactly. So again. you can you can keep all those ones, still keep them somewhere. But for um, pure oh, water nylon, yeah. you can where will you keep it? Like once you just drink it, I bet it like it doesn't stay up to like uh, minutes. Second, yeah. so once you just take it like this, it's like the most trash item that I've ever seen in my life. People just drink it. Come, like, mm. they would collect the one again, like in the market. Just drop it, just drop it. That's the way people use it. And one thing again that I realized about is that you can't even keep water. Like even if you don't finish the water, you still throw it away with the water. The water yeah, At least pet bottles, you can still like, uh, probably if you don't finish the water, you can still put it in your bag. But, eh, uh, pure water sachet. Please, will you carry the remaining water? I say, oh my God, the water will pour. So it's not possible. So it's easily discarded. Yeah. One of the single use plastic that is easily, it is pure water sachet. So we're like, okay, how can we start um, weaving this thing that how can we convert the weaving so that it can become this thing? So later on, we shall be we were able to get the right um, um, the right size to shred. Okay. So it came up very well because initially, uh, let me even just say about it. <laughs> my mom that is that supports me very well in weaving. You know when she, when we started, we were like, like it will not work. <laughs> This wala, what my come and correct you wala. Like she was like, you this girl, you always give yourself wala. I said, why must you um, go through this thing? But do you know that when it worked, eh? Mom was like, yes, this is it. My mom now started telling other people that, hey, my July long pure water no, you can't money there. Like she's not the one advocating. Like exactly, like I was like, that's how things are. Like when people say that thing that you cannot do something sometimes, when the result comes out, they'll be the one to even support you. To support you. Yes, as Everyone like, is proud to associate with success. Yes. Right? <laughs> so how then do you source for this, um, this waste product? Ah, uh, well, we source for it through individuals, then we, um, peer water companies. Some of them have leakages. The individuals too, some of them, like we've already, one thing that helped us initially during when we started was we, um, we go for awareness, creative awareness, where we go to schools and communities to let them understand why they should um, have a clean environment and show them what we do with all these waste. So that it will inspire them to not just to be throwing all these waste away. So they keep it for us. Some donate to us, some sell to us. So they bring it here. Then we go, sometimes we have some um, pure water factories now that they call us that ah, waste is now plenty. Come and pack them and stuff like that. So you've talked about getting these waste products. I don't want to call them waste products because I mean it is useful for you. Yes. Yeah, but when you get all of these things, I'll just sell it to you or they just give it to you like it's not because I want to know if this is capital intensive. I mean, getting sources for these products on like normal businesses that you'll have to get some of your products and then you buy and whatnot. So getting sourcing for these products, is it capital intensive as well? No, it is uh, no, no. Actually, so for, for the for the mats for the yeah, for the massaging. no, no, no. So, so they, don't, they don't charge. They charge, but it is very minimal. Yes, yes, minimal yes, yes. So talk us through the process of production. I mean, when you get it, what do you do next? What happens? Uh, so when we get them, and that's one of the one of the challenges that we have in sourcing is that 
Um, some people will go and pack all these ones that are, they are ready to dirty, like inside before we wash, 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 wash them. So we always encourage them to like don't throw it on the floor, like keep it safe and and clean. So it helps us to like um, do our work very fast. So when we get all these um, raw materials, which are the waste like pure water nylon, so we make sure that we get them to together. So we sort them out into different, um, sometimes different colors of the prints. So we sort them out. So after doing that, um, we wash them thoroughly. Then we disinfect them with um, IPO as well. So when we do that, so we, we dry them. As you can see, there are some of them are outside there that we are still drying. So we dry them for about like three days for it to get properly um, dry very well. So after that, we now shred them into like a thread like. It's very long. Like when we now thread it, like we shred it in a very long one. Then after that, we now weave them. So when we now weave them, so after weaving them, it becomes something like a material, like a fabric material mm -hmm. that you cannot convert, cannot convert to anything. Like when we started initially, we just weave it. We didn't even know like what to even do with it because I was like, we go shake shaking it. Like we should did this now. Now. What, what next? Makes. Like, what can we do? Yeah, what can we make out of it? Of what next yes, yes, yes. What next? Like, what can we do out of it? Then later, we started like um, getting some ideas. Like, okay, we can do this: shopping bags, slippers, school bags, and so on from the material. You've talked about your challenges while you started the business. I mean, uh, definitely there are still challenges you yes. go through. Could you share some of your challenges? Uh, well, the challenge is that, uh, you know, some people still will be like, uh, why would they buy um, something that is made of waste when they can buy something so new? So have people that look down on these products. I mean, they're not impressed that yeah, something good is still coming out of nothing. They, they are impressed, but, you know, like to go away, <laughs> like, uh, why would they even want to like buy something that is made of the waste? Like, and that's one of the things that we are trying to um, work with this um, research um, organization in Lagos at Oshodi okay. to help us test our product so that we can get certification. Okay. If people know that it is um, hundred percent like um, for good for their health, yeah. and some people are scared that okay, what they are going to put on their body, they want it to be safe and everything. So, I believe that will help um, to some um, extent as well. So let's talk about the environment and the Asha OK. Yeah. What is the nexus? I mean, how did you even come about? What's the nexus between the environment and Asha OK? Well, um, I see Asha OK like um, something of our nature, our culture, like um, mm -hmm. like our heritage, yeah. something that people have been doing uh, from those days. And, and you know, there's one thing that they always say that whatever you give to the environment, that's what the environment will give back mm -hmm. at you. To you so um most of the time like um the way we we when we wear our show okay there's a way we there's a way it attaches us to the culture like um and like heritage. to yes to bring out it brings us back to our roots like yes. yes like we are from africa like um this we are from land we are from like everybody is made from this soil like we all believe that uh, so Just we always back to our yes heritage. so and Honestly, well, we, by the time we take care of the environment and, you know, within all these ways at times, even there's this um, project that I'm working on in such a way that we can use this um, weaving, we can use this waste weaving that um, we can use it to heal people, people that are depressed. Wow. So, yes, so um, they can weave things that probably they are thinking about someone that they lose or something, so they can probably get something that belongs to that person and weave it. So why weaving it, you know, they try to relate to it and you. And at the same time, uh, we're trying to do a clay loom. So whereby you use your hand to like uh, mold it into a loom. So, you know, you feel the nature while doing that and, and all those things, you know, it helps a lot, yes. Let's talk about the benefits of recycling on the environment. What are the benefits? Well, the benefit of um, recycling on the environment, because um, when 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 we when we um, recycle our waste, you know, it does not just make the environment clean now, but it helps us to like for our health, we stay in a good place because they always say that a clean place is a safe place. So when our place is clean, we know that okay, it is safe for us to live in. So that's one of the things that, as in like major benefits that I see from recycling. The how, environment. Then how then is this waste product or this waste recycling, how is it beneficial to the economy? 
Uh, well, um, if, if, um, if waste is being managed properly, like if it's being recycled well, it's going to unlock a lot of opportunities, especially um, in terms of um, job opportunities. Mm -hmm. Because now we, we have, like, all these things I've been mentioning since, like, I don't do them all by myself. So I have people that will work together, yes, we employ people. At the same time, we also empower young people. Like now we have a training that we'll be having soon, uh, sponsored by EET Foundation, yes, that will be training 30 youth in Ibadan. So all these kind of things, and we believe that after training these young people, they too, they will move ahead. Aside from the fact that they will be saving the environment, they will also um, create opportunity for their community, for other people as well. So. It can unlock a lot of opportunities. Like so, your unlocking opens another op doors of opportunity yes, for some other person. Yes, That's yes. interesting. So, what advice would you give to people that probably are interested in going into the waste and recycling industry? Ah, uh, well, my advice um, to them is that you know they should not just think that um, they should see it like every other business, mm -hmm. because they should not think that because um, the waste is probably free, and um, they should now. They, they shouldn't like um, make it what it like, um, make it a product. Yes, they should add value to it so that, you know, people will even like um, what they produce out of it. And because, um, and they should not give up initially because so many challenges will come when they keep doing it and it's not working well and you see like, okay, this thing, this thing is not coming. But it, they should just keep uh, pushing and, you know, stay focused on, on and remember what's, what motivated them to start in the first place because those challenges will definitely come and what anytime i see challenges oh, yes i embrace it because i know that if i don't solve it it will not go away <laughs> and one thing about challenges I, I see it as an I, I see it as an exam so like um once once i'm able to to um pass that challenge once i'm able to face it i get to the other level to the next phase of my life so that's where i see challenges on a final note, as a form of um, encouragement, you've talked about your challenges. How about you share with us one happy moment in this journey? One happy moment you would never forget. I mean, it's probably encouraged someone out there to feel like, yeah, I'm not just working, but then there are gains. I, I, I don't know, like uh, the happy moments that I have, I, I still keep having them. Like, you know, I'm so happy, like anytime, almost every day I get message that, that I inspire them a lot. Like. That I, I'm so happy that I do. I I inspire people that, like they tell me that because of me that they are not giving up. Like they too, they want to like keep pursuing their goals and just so because not of this. The fact that you're even speaking with them, the fact that they see your products. Honestly, yes, like as in like courage. yes, they just send me message that. I am a testimony so... to that. Let me confess <laughs> that because I mean I saw the boxes you made, I Thank saw you. shoes, Thank I saw you. bags, and now you're even putting on one of the outfits you yeah. made from this. This is really, really beautiful. I must really say that uh, great work you're doing here, Thank and I so wish much. you more and more success and expansion Thank in your you. business. Thank, Thank you for accommodating us. Thank, Thank you for <laughs> being a good host, and uh, it was such a pleasure meeting you. Same here. Thank I look you. forward to meeting you in future and having more yeah. conversations. And that will be all for today's episode of Women Series. You can follow us on all our social media platforms and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. For more information on our news stories and your finances, please visit www.crochetng.com to get more information on your news stories and videos. Thank you for watching. And until next time, please stay safe.